All right, everybody, we are back with our next rock star note camp counselor. And this guy has probably counseled more investors on how to raise private capital than you can shake a stick at. He has uh, has been a very active investor for years. But one of the things I think he's he's tapped into an, an amazing way to approach raising private capital and getting your investors to chase you versus you chasing your investor. So uh, we're honored to have my buddy Dave DeBeau. Joins here. He's uh, founder of the Money Partner Formula, and he's going to be sharing with you how to raise private investor capital made easy. And uh, just so honored he's taking time out of his busy schedule to join us here on Note Camp. And Dave, welcome to Note Camp, buddy. Hey, brother. Always appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Definitely. How's the weather up where you're at? Warm? Absolutely cool, gorgeous. Yeah, I'm, I'm up sure. here in beautiful, beautiful British Columbia, Canada. It gets warm two or three times a year, and this is one of those times. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I will let you take this away. I'll be lurking. You want, you want quick people to ask questions. You go through to wait till the very end. You know what? Um, yeah, we can wait till the very end. If you don't mind keeping an eye on the, uh, on the chat box, that would be great. Oh, let me stop there. I got to make sure that I'm sharing things with sound. Cause we've got some video clips here for people. Good yeah. stuff. So Scott, give me a thumbs up. You can see everything. Okay. There. All looks good, and I'll be lurking here. But I'm All turn right, my lurk away, my friend. Okay, thanks very much, Scott. Appreciate it. Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. This is Dave Debo, and our presentation today is how to raise private capital made easy. That's what it's all about. And big thanks to this good-looking guy for having me out to his note camp. Really appreciate this. And here's what you're going to be learning over the next 60 minutes. You're going to learn how to attract your first or your next investor partners raise six figures in a matter of weeks and even seven figures in a matter of months. And this is even if you're just starting from scratch. So this is going to be a big picture overview. Don't take it lightly. There's going to be a lot of really good training in here. But also, if you're looking to get into something a little bit more in depth, we'll give you that opportunity with our Capital Activator, which is kind of a combination of a home study program plus a live training boot camp as well. And again, in this overview webinar, you're going to get lots of great nuggets. In fact, Luke attended this about a year ago on online like this on Zoom. <laughs> and he said, after watching your free webinar, I went out and raised a hundred grand. All right. So this stuff works, you guys. And I got some freebies for you guys for being on here live this morning, for taking time on Sunday to be here. The first thing is a copy of the slide deck from this presentation, because I'm going to be going through over 100 slides in less than 60 minutes. So I'm going really fast. I want you to take some high-level notes, but don't sweat the details too much because you'll get all of the slides. I'll show you how at the end. Plus, a special report I put together for you all about generating credibility. Because for people who invest 50, 75, 100 grand with you, they need to know you, they need to like you, and they need to trust you with their money. So that's all about that trust factor. All right? So why is it that some people are so successful in real estate investing while the vast majority are not? And you've probably heard of the Pareto principle, the 80 20 rule. It applies to everything, definitely applies to real estate investing. We've got the bottom 80% of real estate investors, of note investors, of everybody scrambling for 20% of the deals. And the top 20% of real estate investors get the lion's share of all the deals, the best deals. They get to cherry pick, they get the cash flow, they get the equity, they get all of those benefits. So, how do we go? from the bottom 80% in the top 20% and then into the top 5%. Well, we're going to show you how it here today. And I firmly believe in this saying by Stephen Covey, I'm not a product of my circumstances. I am a product of my decisions. That's been true for me for good and for bad throughout my entire life. It's true for all of us. And here's the thing, you guys, I've been teaching and training about real estate investing and raising capital for a long time, for over 15 years now, at least the whole real estate space. And I've seen people become very, very successful very quickly in spite of what other people use as excuses. Age, Dave, I'm too old to get into real estate investing. Baloney, I've seen people get started in their 70s and become very successful. Dave, I'm too young. Baloney, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen the son of some of our clients who was 15 years old, raised capital, bought a five flex before he had his driver's license. So none of that needs to get in your way. Male, female, or otherwise, there is no longer a glass ceiling. So that's not an excuse, all right? Where The color of your skin, where you're from originally, if you got an accent or not, none of that needs to matter. In fact, some of our most successful clients are first-generation immigrants to the area, all right? Current money situation, credit situation, contact situation. You don't even need a ton of experience, you guys. All you need is one deal under your belt to start raising capital. And 
I've seen people become very, very successful in times of economic uncertainty. Are we in one of those times right now? You bet. Okay. World crises, war, pandemics, political upheaval, you name it, recessions. P perfect time, perfect opportunity for deals. And I know Scott's all about the notes, but it doesn't really matter what real estate investing strategy you're focusing on. I've seen people become very successful in notes. I've seen people become very successful very quickly in buy and hold of single family homes, the Burr strategy, buy, fix and sells, lease options, commercial, commercial residential, development deals, tax liens, tax deeds, notes, all that kind of stuff. None of it matters. It Well, there's not one particular magic bullet. This works for all of it. So what is the golden key to success? It's easy, you guys. It's having access to the capital you need when you need it. Now you're saying, well, Dave, yeah, that's why we're sticking around listening to you jibber jabber here, buddy. What's new? Well, what's new, you guys, is I'm going to show you a completely different way to go about doing this. And here, take this as a note, because I can't remember if I've got this in the updated slides yet or not. So take this as a note. This is our big picture overview mission goal of the whole process I'm teaching here today. And here it is, you guys. It's to get your investor ducks in a row. That means if I could wave the magic wand for you, you would have three, four, five, six people or more eagerly waiting for your next deal, anxious and excited to invest their capital, to invest their money with you in your next deal. Does that make sense? Have a group of them, have your investor ducks in a row. And what do we need to be able to do that? We need to get you sitting down, talking with prospective investors about what you're up to. That's the crux of the matter. That's what it all boils down to, getting you investor meetings booked. And that's what this whole, what I'm going to teach you here today, this money partner formula is all about. It's about getting you investor meetings booked with your ideal prospective investors so that you can have your investor ducks in a row and you can charge forth and do as many deals as you want to. All right. So if you don't have this lined up already, I think I know it's holding you back. Same thing that held me back for a long time. You know what? Quite frankly, it's the fear of picking up this thing, this 800 pound gorilla of a telephone and coming across like you're begging for money. Nobody wants to come across like they're begging for money, like a beggar with your hat in your hand. Nobody wants that. Right. So what we're going to teach you here today is how to turn that around. Instead, have people text messaging you or calling you, have people emailing you, have people booking meetings on your calendar that pop up automatically. People coming to you, pre-educated, predisposed, pre-qualified to invest with you and your deals and excited about it, all right? So let's give you a quick little reality check as we charge forth here. And this is kind of a dangerous thing to say on a Sunday when we're talking about real estate stuff, but here's the reality. Nobody really loves real estate for real estate's sake. I mean, be honest. If I gave you the choice, hey, keep doing whatever it is you're doing with real estate investing or win that humongous Lotto Max thing, 1.1 billion, which would you choose? Keep doing what you're doing with real estate or win that 1.1 billion? I'm pretty much 120% sure you'd choose, you'd choose the win the 1.1 billion. But here's the thing. You're an intelligent person you understand that you're not going to be winning the 1.1 billion, that you have to create it. You have to create that wealth for yourself and your family. And what we have wisely chosen is we've chosen real estate as our vehicle to take us from where we are to where we want to go financially. And every vehicle, I'm going to use that as an analogy throughout the presentation. Every vehicle needs two things. It needs a driver, that's you, and it needs fuel. And for our real estate vehicle, that is money. That is capital, all right? So there's a couple of choices when it comes to capital. For most of us, we start off self-financing our deals. And that is a good way to get started. But it's kind of like having that little jerry can of gas. You put that in a vehicle, off you go. It'll get you a little ways. But sooner or later, you're going to run out of gas. You're going to stall. You're going to get stuck. And that's where the bottom 80% of real estate investors stay. They stay stuck because they rely on self-financing their deals. Now, on the other hand, when you apply what you're going to learn here today, you're going to have your very own investor gas station where you can go anytime you want, fill up 24-7, and off you go. Okay, here's my mercifully brief backstory, you guys. I'm up here in Canada doing real estate deals. I've been doing this stuff since 2003. You name it, I've tried a whole bunch of different varieties of real estate investing. But when I first started raising capital, <clears throat> I was doing single-family home deals kind of a short-term strategy, what I call a client-first lease option deal. 
So it required going out and buying properties. And I self-financed my first couple of properties and then ran out of gas, ran out of, ran out of money, right? And credit. And that's, of course, when the perfect deal landed on my lap and I crunched all the numbers. I realized I was going to make a nice little $40,000 profit on this deal after paying my investors and everybody else out over about 18 to 24 months. Cool. So I got the property tied up and I'd heard, hey, if you want to raise capital, pick up the phone and start dialing for dollars because I didn't have any experience raising capital before that. So I tried that. I picked up the phone, dialed, 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 rejected, rejected, rejected. I quickly stopped doing that because like most people, I don't really like rejection. Okay. <laughs> Next thing I heard is, hey, if you need to raise capital, go out and turn every conversation into a real estate conversation. Start networking and schmoozing. Use your elevator pitch, all this kind of stuff, right? So I tried that. I went to the local B&I, Chamber of Commerce, Toastmasters, wherever they'd let me in the door. In I went, schmoozing up a storm and raising zero capital. 2020 hindsight, it's kind of logical. I mean, I needed to raise 85 grand for this deal I had. Well, at this point, less than a week to do it. So I was kind of desperate, all right? Speaking of desperation, it got to Wednesday and I had to remove subjects on Friday. I can remember this. And I was really, really sweating. And I came up with what I thought was a brilliant idea. Hey, if enough people see this great deal, it's going to sell itself. So I put together a PDF, emailed it out to everybody I knew. I created a list of about 200 people. And I sent that out Wednesday night, got up Thursday morning, saw a whole bunch of responses in my inbox. And thank goodness, something's finally working until I started reading the responses and they basically all said, hey, Debo, dude, I haven't heard from you in forever. Here you are, hit me up for cash for a deal. Take a hike, all right? So you guys, the end of the deal is I did not raise the capital for that property. I watched the deal go up in smoke, watched my profit go up in smoke and got major egg on my face because I live in a relatively small community. At that time, we had about 80,000 people. Everybody knows everybody in the real estate space. <clears throat> excuse me. So I got major egg on my face with the seller of the property. I tied up his property for a couple of weeks. My realtor, his realtor, uh, mortgage broker. I had a tenant buyer lined up for this property. They had already given notice where they were renting. Major, major kerfuffle, right? Why? Because I had run out of gas. I fell for what I call the big lie in real estate investing. Here it is, you guys. Just find a good deal and the money will find you. Baloney. That's not how it works, people. Right. The gurus key. I'd like to know whoever came up with this and I would smack them right upside the head. Right. It might work for the gurus who already have a major platform. But for you and I, as mom and pop real estate investors, it doesn't work that way. Here's what we need to do instead. This is logical. Just like Harvey McKay said, just like Confucius, I think, said way before him. Dig your well before you're thirsty. Right. Raise the capital first, then go looking for the deals. So it's like our analogy here. If you're going to go on a cross-country tour in your car, you'd fill up before you left, right? Same thing with capital. So that's when I decided, hey, let's focus on this raising capital thing. Most of what was out there was complete crap in my estimation. So I had to reinvent things and I had to come up with things. So luckily, I have a bit of a background in marketing. I said, hey, what if I apply intelligent marketing to this whole capital raising thing? And let's see how that works. And it has worked very, very well. That's what I'm going to teach you here. So here it is. This has worked amazingly well for relatively new investors. Here's Brandon. He had one deal under his belt when we started working together very, very quickly, uh, applied the process, got in a, a, a meeting with a friend of his mom's, ended up getting three investors from that first meeting. So it works very well for new investors. Uh, Mark's a great example. I'll share his story later on. Experienced investors. He was transitioning from small deals to big deals and professional investors as well. People who already have experience. So like John and Paul, these guys had tons of experience doing it the old way. We applied the new way and it worked so much better for them, you guys. So let me share three foundational principles that are really important for you to understand as we get started. Here's the first one. I think a, a, a picture says a, a thousand words, right? So don't be that guy or that gal. And what does that mean? Look at that picture. That is a desperate dude, right? We don't want to come across as that desperate creepy person when it comes to raising capital. We need to position ourselves properly. We need to go about doing things properly. So in my mind, it looks desperate and it's really the wrong positioning when you're picking up the phone and dialing people up cold, like I did back in the day. When you're networking and schmoozing with strangers trying to raise capital, bad idea. When you're doing all these desperate things, it just repels people. It doesn't matter how good your deal is. 
if they can smell that commission breath, that's what they call it in sales, commission breath on you, it's going to repel people, all right? So it's all about positioning and it's all about confidence. It's very, very important that you are in confident in what you're doing and what your opportunity is all about and that you position yourself as an expert and attract people instead of chasing after. All right, foundational principle number two, stranger danger. We tell our kids this, and this is very true when it comes to raising capital. I see so many people out there charging out, trying to sh you know schlep their deals on social media, all these kind of things. They're going out in a public forum soliciting investors, all right? So very, very bad idea to go after strangers, especially when you're first getting started with raising capital for two reasons. Reason number one is logic, right? In order for somebody to invest with you, they need to know you, like you, and trust you with their money. Going out to a stranger, they don't know you, they don't like you, they certainly do not trust you with their money, so that is dumb, right? You have to start from scratch. Reason number two is legalities. A quick little caveat here, I'm not a lawyer, a security specialist or anything like that. I am a marketer and a real estate guy sharing my understanding. Up here in Canada and in the States, we have the securities regulators. You guys have got the Securities and Exchange Commission. We've got the same idea up here. It's no easier. And basically, they all say it's illegal for you and I as a mom and pop real estate investor to raise capital from the general public unless we're either licensed to do so or we've got exemptions or we've set up certain corporate structures with offering memorandums and all this really expensive, heavy-duty stuff that's quite, uh, quite frankly, beyond the scope of most of us as mom and pop real estate investors, right? So we don't want to do that. Stranger danger. Do not go after strangers, especially when you're first getting started, all right? I'll show you exactly who to focus on instead. So foundational principle number three, <clears throat> you've got the golden touch. It's a matter of using it. What do I mean by that? is if you've got one of these things, a cell phone, and you got a finger and you've ever put it on your cell phone, that is your golden touch. And I don't mean cold contact. I mean that within your existing network of contacts, you've already got access to somewhere between $1.5 and $3 million, if not more, at your fingertips. You've already got the golden touch. We just have to show you to use it. All right. So these hey, are the three of them. To, yep. They, can you repeat that one more time for everybody? Because I always say that too. How much money is in somebody's database right now, probably? <laughs> Anywhere between $1.5 and $3 million. Way more for rock stars like yourself, my friend. But for the rest of us, for the mom and pops, somewhere between $1.5 and $3 million. Typically, that's what I've seen. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Sorry to interrupt you. No problem, brother. All right. So those are the three foundational principles, you guys. Number one, don't come across as desperate and needy. It's going to creep people out. Number two, don't go after the general public. That's going to set you up for failure and potentially for a lot of pain with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And number three, you've got that golden touch. Your existing network already has all the capital you need, at least in the short term, to really get rolling with raising capital. All right, you guys. So that's what we're going to go over here is the big picture is what I call my money partner formula. Five simple steps we'll be going over here on exactly how to raise capital. And if you want more in-depth training on this, we'll show you how in a little bit. But again, the idea, you guys, is let's get those investor ducks in a row. Just like my client here, Rick, when we first started working together, he had one deal under his belt, negative cash flow. He got educated about real estate investing, got educated about using other people's money, and he went to town with it. So I'm going to share some videos with you guys. Sound quality, video quality is probably going to be mediocre because we're doing this over Zoom. So maybe you have to turn up your volume, but listen to what Rick has to say about having these investor ducks in a row. Have a listen to this, then I'll show you the results in a second. There was absolutely zero way I could put the deal together on my own. Didn't have the finances or couldn't qualify for another mortgage, whatever it is. Um, you know, so I would have had to pass on deals that uh, were great opportunities if I hadn't, uh, hadn't had investors on board. But thankfully, he had the investors on board. Here's what he was able to do right away. He was focusing on the Burr strategy, buying a single family home, putting in a suite. He got 19 of these properties on the go, each one with an investor partner, a joint venture partner in this case. And the way Rick was doing this is he had the upstairs unit that he was renting, the downstairs unit. He rented out the garage separately. He rented out the backyard, for crying out loud, for RV storage. He was netting nine. $900 a month 
per property after he paid his investor partners out. I'm not sure what that adds up to, 900 times 19. Pretty darn good. Last time I talked with Rick, he was getting into bigger deals. He was buying a 24-unit apartment building just outside of Austin, Texas, and starting to get into some uh, development deals as well. So it really is, it's up to us. You can self-finance your deals, do onesie twosies every number of years. That's like having a little econo car. It's probably not going to get you there very quickly and you're not going to have very much fun. Or you can get into bigger or a higher volume of deals using other people's money because there's so much of it out there looking for a good home. So myself, I went from doing creative deals to doing single family home deals. More recently, I've gotten into multifamily properties, kind of following Kiyosaki's thing, go from going from small deals to big deals. And here's an example. A few years ago, raised $800,000 from five investor partners, and we bought a $4.7 million, 54-unit apartment deal, apartment building, two, two buildings, actually. And the five-year profits on this came out to be over $355,000 for cash flow, mortgage pay down $485,000, appreciation over $1 million, total profits shared with our investor partners, over $1.8 million. What does this show us? That we've got access to capital. You can either do a higher, bigger volume of the kind of deals you're currently doing and or you can start getting into bigger deals. So we started doing development deals, raised millions of dollars for development deals as well. So it's all about attracting other people's capital for your deals, you guys. So here's the big picture. Let's take a look at this and then we'll dive into the details. Step number one of the five-step process, let's create a target group of your ideal, perfect potential investors and focus on them and reconnect with them on a personal level first before we start talking business. Step number two, we need to have what I call your million dollar investor presentation ready to go. So when people put up their hand and say, hey, tell me about your deals, you're not caught like the deer in the headlights. You've got something to show them to walk a non-real estate person through so they're going to easily understand and get enrolled as an investor. Step number three, constant, consistent, edutaining communication. This is the marketing. This is what is going to get people coming to you pre-educated, pre-motivated, pre-qualified, and booking meetings on your calendar that pop up like by magic. All right. Step number four, once we've got a couple of investors on board, it's really important that we really kick things up with the credibility and the authority. We want to be seen as a credible real estate expert in the eyes of our prospective investors. And step number five, once you've just got even one investor on board, now you can start the snowball effect because your investors tend to know other people with money so we can get referrals and testimonials. That's the big picture, you guys. We'll dive into the details here in a second. If you really want to dive in, then I'm going to invite you to join me with the Capital Activator online training plus our live workshop coming up in September. So here's some of the challenges you're probably facing right now. So you don't have enough money to do as many or bigger deals as you want to. You're not sure how to get the word out who you should be talking to, who you should not be talking to, to about real investing with you. If now's even a good time to be talking about this with interest rates, with recession talk, with stuff with real estate, is now even a good time? Spoiler alert, yes, it is, okay? You're not sure how to approach people without coming across as desperate or needy. And if somebody does put up their hand, how do you show them what you're doing, especially if they don't have a background in real estate investing? And here's the real bottom line, you guys. Chances are you're a busy person. You've got a family, you've got a job, you're real estate investing, you got to manage that. You don't have time to learn a whole new thing on top of that, all right? So let's dive in. Let's take a look at this step-by-step. -step. So step number one is let's create that target group of ideal prospective investors, all right? So if you're going to take notes here, draw a circle on a piece of paper, draw a circle on a piece of paper and draw the number 200 in the middle of that circle. That is your dream 200 list of prospective investors. That's what we're going to laser, laser focus on. All right. So who is going to make up this list, your dream 200? Well, we already talked about going out to strangers, right? Going out to the general public, going out to people that we don't know, stranger danger. So don't do that, right? Because we mentioned logic and legalities. We don't want you to get trouble with that. So avoid strangers. Now there is a group of strangers that we can play with, and these are accredited investors. However, here's the challenge. These people make the make up the top 3% of the population financially. High income, high net worth individuals, okay? If you know them, great. If you don't, guess what? They're not going to pay any attention to you until you've got a track record of working with investors. Why? Because everybody and their dog is going after these people. So there's tons of competition. So you probably say, well, Dave, it's all bad news so far. Yes, it is until right now. Here's the good news. You've already got access 
to somewhere between $1.5 and $3 million worth of capital in your network. So I've got a big, war big warm, fuzzy picture up here. That's what we want to focus on. Your existing network, friends, family members, coworkers, business associates, you know them, they know you. People from your sports organizations, churches, civic organizations, whatever you're into, you've got a pre-existing relationship with these people, all right? Now, if I could see your beautiful faces, some of you would be looking at me like this. But Dave, <clears throat> you don't know my friends and family. Everyone I know is broke. <laughs> okay, I hear this one all the time. Time out. No, they aren't. Never, never, ever assume, right? There was a book written a few years ago called The Millionaire Next Door. They studied millionaires in North America, and they found out that the vast majority of them, number one, are first generation. They made their own money. Number two, they don't look like millionaires look, according to Hollywood. They don't drive flashy cars. They don't live in flashy houses. They don't have bikini-clad babes and diamonds hanging out on Lambos and yachts. That's all BS. They're everyday people who drive everyday vehicles, live in everyday houses and are exceptionally good with their money. All right. So never, ever assume. And quite often the people are all flash, ain't got no cash. So don't assume that. All right. Dave, I've heard don't mix business and friendship. Never do business with family members. That's a recipe for disaster. All right. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. My grandpappy taught me that. Right. Guess what, you guys? If you do it, Correctly, it's a win-win scenario. If you do it wrong, you're right. That can set you up for failure. So you want to make sure that you do it right. And I'm going to show you in a second here why it's so important that we make this opportunity available to our friends and our family. All right. <clears throat> and here's one of the biggest ones. Well, Dave, yeah, I, I kind of like to tell people about this, but I've still got egg on my face from the last time I tried something and I made a big splash and nothing came of it. All right. So this happens all the time with people trying out network marketing or MLM stuff. They make a big splash. They get signed up. They sign up a few other people and then it fizzles out. And nobody makes any money. Okay. Or they've tried a business in the past and maybe they got a few in investors on board. It didn't work out. Something happened, right? Guess what? Give yourself a break. In fact, give yourself a little pat on the back for actually trying something. Most people never even try. And then here's the trick, especially if everybody already knows that you kind of crashed and burned before. Don't try to pretend it didn't happen. In fact, here's a good idea. Point to it and use it as a teaching moment. Use it as a stepping stone instead. Say, hey, you might recall I tried that in the past. It didn't really work out. I'm doing real estate investing now. It's so much better. I'm doing so well with it. And here's why. Okay. Does that make sense? Use it as a teaching moment. Use it as a stepping stone. And here's the reality. Everybody loves a comeback story. Everybody loves the rags to riches. Everybody loves... The, the hero that's been beaten down and still gets back up again. Heck, all of the Rocky movies are that. Okay, so don't worry about it. If you've, if you've tried something that didn't work out, I firmly believe it's our patriotic duty to educate our friends and our family about what we're up to with real estate investing and allow them to make an educated decision as to whether they want to participate or not. Now, notice I'm talking a lot about education. I don't say pressure. I don't say manipulate. I don't say browbeat people into investing with you. Educate them and allow them to make up their own mind. Because here's the reality. The average person's investment choices suck. Everything there on the screen, the average person does wrong. They buy on emotion, they buy high, and then they get scared and they freak out anytime things start going down and they sell low, okay? This is what happened at the beginning of the pandemic. I can remember, I was sitting on a ski lift with a buddy of my cousin's who is telling us he just lost 60% of his net worth because he sold off his stock portfolio, right? It started crashing. He sold it off in one fell swoop. And the guy was in his 60s. So he was really, really hooped. I firmly believe, I don't know about you, but I firmly believe that a good real estate deal is the best way for everyday folks like yourself, like myself, like our investors to get an above average return on our money backed by a solid tangible asset, which is a real piece of property or a note right? Backed by real estate. That is the best way. I don't know any other investment class out there that offers as much control, that has as many different potential profit centers as real estate does. So it's the best way, right? And here's the thing. Most of us, when we get started raising capital, it's all about me, 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 me. What's in it for me? But when we realize what we're bringing to the table for our investor partners, then that changes our whole perspective. 
just like it did for my client, uh, John. John's my mo most successful client to date. He's raised well over $30 million for his real estate deals. I interviewed him a little while back and asked him, hey, John, number one, who do you like to have on board as your ideal investor partners? And number two, what's your favorite success story? I want you guys to think about this. How would it feel if you could do something similar for one of your investors? Have a listen to what John has to say. It was a big light bulb aha moment when I learned that I could partner with other people. So that idea was totally new to me before I had met you, Dave. And now, now it's something that I do very regularly. I, I actually prefer working with friends and family because I like working hard knowing that they're making a good return. And I like being able to help out my sphere a little more directly like that. So I really like growing my friends' money and helping them do something that they can't on their own. I get very happy investors, Dave. I've uh, got one client in particular and where I'll be sending them enough money every month that they can actually be retired off the passive income that they, that they get. And so that just makes me feel really good because that's one of the things that I got into this to do was so that I could do that for myself. Now I have the power to be able to do that for other people. I love that example, you guys. So think about that. <laughs> now, Helping somebody retire thanks to their one investment with you might be a bit of a stretch, but if you could help somebody retire better or a little bit sooner or put a, put a kid through college or take the family on an extra vacation or drive a nicer vehicle, do some repairs on their house, how would that make you feel if that was due to your efforts? How cool is that? So it really is. It's not all about me, me, me. It's a win-win scenario. You're helping, just like John said, you're helping somebody else who cannot or will not do this on their own, get ahead financially, thanks to investing with you. Just like Rena, one of the investors in that 54 unit apartment building deal, getting her cash flow checked. Does she look like a happy camper? Yeah, why? Because it's a win for her, it's a win for us as well. It's a win-win scenario. All right, so you're probably going, well, Dave, how do I create, I don't know 200 people, I'm not gonna come up with a list of 200 people. It's a lot easier than to think you guys. So here's what we do, take your cell phone, Go to your contacts, take a look at how many contacts you got on your cell phone. Chances are, and in fact, in fact, Scott, if you're up for this, we can make this a little bit of a participatory thing. You guys, if you want to go to your cell phone and then go to your contacts and scroll down to the very bottom and see what the total number of contacts is on your phone. It's not a competition or anything, but if you want to type that in the chat box, let's kind of get an idea of what the range is. That's where we're going to start. So we, we get all of the contacts out of the cell phone and put them into an Excel spreadsheet. That's job number one. Job number two is go into all your different email addresses. You won't be able to have time to do that right now, but go into your different email addresses and export all of your contacts from your email addresses, okay? From your email accounts. Old business cards lying around. Scan them, get them into that Excel spreadsheet. Your social media, whatever your flavor of the month is. If you're a Facebook person, a LinkedIn person, a TikTok, TikTok, Instagrammy, whatever the heck it is that you're into, Get all of your contacts out of there. Get them into that Excel spreadsheet. And now here's what we're going to do. Instead of having to think up 200 people, chances are you're going to have a couple of thousand. And now it's a matter of whittling it down. And here's the trick. When you're whittling it down, you want to focus on people that you actually have a relationship with. You know them. They know you. If you bumped into that person on the street, you'd recognize each other and you can have at least have a good conversation. Does that make sense? So that's how you're able to quickly whittle that down to 200 people. Okay. Scott, have we had any, uh, any, anything coming in the chat there? Yeah. Patricia had 953. RJ had 2289. I had 2945. Holy crap. <clears throat> yeah. So there you go, you guys. Not too hard to come up with 200 when you're starting out with 2000. Right? So <laughs> Want to whittle it down to that. Those people that you actually have a connection with. Thanks very much. Thanks for guys for playing along here. Now you guys, very important. Do not do like dumb, dumb Dave did back in the day and just charge in with, hey, I got deals. Have you got dough? No. <laughs> because even if that works, which it really doesn't, you're going to turn off so many people that could be really good investors because you're too clumsy about it. Here's what we want to do. Let's get classy instead. Let's reconnect with these people on a personal level first, and then we set the stage for talking business down the line. We call this the warm-up campaign. We reconnect with them. Beautiful thing is you can do this via, e you can automate this and send it out via email. But very important that you reconnect with people on a personal level first. Have a listen to Sabrina, how well this whole warm-up process worked for her. All right, listen to this. 
what's new um a lot of people want to invest now and i have all these meetings and i have all these appointments and phone calls and i'm like what where do i put their money yeah well that's a nice problem to have how how come all of this interest has been generated so, so it, it's just because of the warm-up campaign like taking the time to simply reconnect right so don't charge in you guys warm them up first it's going to set the stage for everything coming down the pipeline all right step number two now that we've warmed them up we want to Make sure that when they do put up their hand, we've got something to show them, what we call your million-dollar investor presentation. This is what it all boils down to, folks. You can do everything else right, but if you screw up your investor meeting, it's all for naught. So you want to make sure that you've got a really good presentation. What I'm going to recommend is a PowerPoint, a slideshow presentation that you can walk people through. It's visual. They can see what you're up to. You can use it one-on-one in person at coffee shop meetings. You can jump on Zoom with somebody. You can do online group meetings. Very, very effective. You can do webinars. Very, very super effective. But you need to have an excellent presentation, especially for showing non-real estate people what you're up to and addressing their concerns. Here's a big tip for you, okay? Big tip is make sure that your presentation doesn't just show the good side of everything, right? So I see so many people doing this. They put together a presentation. It's all sunshine and flowers. They never show what the negatives are or the potential pitfalls are. And that's a big mistake, right? Because people aren't dumb. People know that there's an upside, there's a downside to things. So you want to show people what the downside is, but don't just leave it there. Show them what you're going to do to minimize that should it happen or mitigate that should that happen, right? So don't leave them hanging, right? And a good presentation makes all the difference. Again, this is Brandon. Uh, he was pretty new to real estate investing. He had one deal under his belt. We went through the process with him. He got a meeting with a friend of his mom's. She was so impressed with the presentation. She said, Brandon, I'm in. He said, great, because I think his minimum was 100000 And then she said, but wait a minute. I know two of my friends who should really take a look at this. Brandon thought, cool, that sounds good. He thought maybe he'd get names and get introduced. He said, hey, do you mind if I have them come over right now and take a look at this? He said, sure. Her two friends came over. He ended up getting three investors that evening from that very first presentation. Was that beginner's luck? No, it's because Brandon was prepared and he had an excellent presentation. Here's Joe on the power of the presentations, how much money can be raised very, very quickly and the importance of getting a bunch of them booked. I actually got to meet with a couple of people as well. Yeah, like they just touched base and they're like, oh, you know, saw your, your, uh, your videos and they're uh, looking to invest actually, those people. 250 plus for each one for each couple but, um, you might have you. just raised 400 to five hundred thousand dollars yeah yeah <laughs> which is funny <laughs> the other way i was doing it before wasn't happening like that that's for sure just from those two people so and, and I, I booked 20 meetings yeah like a really gorgeous like get five and i really i was like okay if i'm gonna get five i might as well shoot out 20. funny they all agreed to it so which is ex exciting all right. I love that, you guys. So there he goes. Two investors, couples, somewhere between four and $500,000 committed and 20 more meetings booked. That's what this is all about, you guys. All right. Step number three of the five-step process is let's get the marketing going. Constant, consistent, edutaining communication. Edutaining means it's a combination of educational and hopefully a little bit entertaining because here's an important point. You always got to remember that your prospective investors are not real estate enthusiasts like we are. They aren't spending their Sunday learning about real estate investing. They're doing something else, all right? So we got to make sure that we're reaching them at their level, that we're creating a little bit of curiosity and giving them a clear call to action. So if you guys want to write down some notes, here are the three things that are working best these days for our clients. Number one, electronic newsletters or e-zines. Number two, video logs, video logs. Number three, blog posts, blog posts, drip, drip, drip. Here's the goal. Every single week, there's a little bit of edutaining communication coming out from you to your prospective investors with a clear call to action. Hey, if you'd like to find out more, click on the big link below, book a call. Let's have a conversation. Let's see how this can work for you. If you do this right, you guys are going to set yourself up for success. You're going to edutain people. You're going to create curiosity. You're going to get them reaching out to you, coming to you already a little bit pre-educated, pre-motivated, pre-qualified 
to invest with you without ever having to cold call. And now is the perfect time, you guys, double down on this stuff. It's all about attracting people to us, getting them to self-identify, put up their hand and say, hey, you know what? I'm interested. Get those investor meetings booked, get those commitments, get those investor ducks in a row. Just like Are you ready to invest? And they see, keep seeing these emails. Uh, even today, the email that went, the e-scene that went out today, I had a friend who's like, yeah, I'm ready to invest just from that one email. And this happens like all the time now. People know what I'm doing. I'm constantly communicating with people. And then when they see these e-scenes, um, because they see it ongoing, they say, okay, yep, I'm ready to go. And we get contacted just from those e-scenes alone. How much would you say that you have raised up to this point? It's definitely been over a million by now, for sure. All of our projects were funded. Then I went off and got new projects. And then my investor list is just there and I send it off. Any new opportunities, invest, investing opportunities, I send it off to my investors list. And just from that list, I get, we get, you know, yes, I'm in for this much or yes, we're in for that. You're telling me the process works. It works. <laughs> it works. It definitely works, you guys. So that's the whole goal. Get those investor ducks in a row. Step number four is being seen as the expert authority in the eyes of your prospective investors and that target group, your dream 200. So lots of ways to do this. Uh, take that leadership role. Be the big cheerleader for real estate investing in your sphere. Dress sharp when you're talking with people about their money. Speak knowledgeably about your strategy and your market. Good link materials, a sharp website is going to go a long way. On your investor-focused website, make sure you've got lots of videos because video is a, a website with video gets four times the interaction and the response as the same information just written out, all right? And a, a really good website can actually get people coming to you pre-educated, predisposed, pre-qualified to invest. They're actually kind of, you know, selling themselves on you instead of you having to sell yourself on them just like they did for Lee and Leffer. These two, when we first started working on them, they had two pre-construction uh, pre pre -construction condo deals under their belt. Now they're getting into multifamily deals because they've got their investor ducks in a row. We have a great news. What's that? Partner. We have another new joint venture partner. Oh my goodness, you guys are just going great guns. Congratulations. Tell me about this. Tell me the story. What happened? So he went into the website and he was like, oh, your website's so nice. Um, and... He actually read through most of it and looked at the videos. And uh, we had a phone call yesterday. He called me um, and then he was like vetting himself to be a joint venture <laughs> partner. <laughs> I didn't even have to tell him a lot. We don't have to oh, convince that's, that's even, We don't no have to convince him. Him. Yeah. He was like telling me all the information. I didn't even ask him yet. <laughs> So that worked beautifully. In fact, that investor came on with $250,000, all right? Other ways, you guys, get some professional headshots taken. That's really good. Put those up on your, on your website. Use that in your presentation, your marketing materials, sharp-looking business cards. All of this goes a long way to helping create that credibility. All right, step number five of the five-step process. Once you've got even one or two investors on board, it's so much easier, you guys. You can start the snowball effect here. And what does that mean? That means your investors tend to hang out with other people with money. So if you proactively encourage referrals, in other words, you ask for referrals at the right time, in the right way, in the right context, you're going to get them. And same thing with testimonials, especially video testimonials. Those are absolute gold. You don't need to have a ton of them. Even just getting started with your first investor is going to make a huge difference. All right, you guys, we're going to do a quick review. And then we can open up for Q&A at the end here if you'd like. So how this can work for you. So again, real estate is the vehicle that's going to get you from where you are to where you want to be financially. Capital, other people's money is the fuel that's going to make that happen. And having these investor partners, these joint venture partners on board, it's like having your very own sports car. It's going to get you there so much faster than trying to do it on your own. So it really is up to you. You can continue to self-finance things and do onesie twosies every goodness knows how often. Or you can start working with other people's money. It's like having your very own gas station. In you go anytime you want, and you fill up and off you go to the races. And just like Robert Kiyosaki, author of that famous purple book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, says, he or she who raises the most money wins. So you guys, this has been a good little overview. But if you're serious about this, then I'm going to encourage you to seriously consider 
our capital activator process, right? Because what do you do? What do you do to really reconnect? How do you do that warm up campaign? What do you need to have and what order do you need to have it for an effective million dollar slideshow presentation? How do you set up this marketing so you can set it and forget it and it's automated for you, right? Because you've learned a little bit here today, but if you don't put it into play, it's all for nothing. So if you remember back to the days when you're learning how to drive, I hope your parents did not just throw you the keys to the car and say, hey, go figure it out. Hopefully somebody got in that vehicle and showed you how step-by-step. Step. And that's what I want to do with this program. So let me ask you this. If you could create your very own process for attracting investors who are eager to fund your real estate dreams, if you could do that without cold calling or spamming people, and you could do it for a very small cost starting immediately, would you be interested? Well, hopefully so. This is my Capital Activator program. Let me tell you very, very briefly about it because it is the ultimate shortcut to get from where you are to where you want to be financially. So I'm going to encourage you to take some time off away from Facebook, away from Netflix, and invest that time in your education. It's going to pay off dividends for the rest of your life. So here's what you get with the program. First thing is you get the on-demand training. So these are video training modules. This is the kind of stuff that other guys and gals would charge you $2,000 for. I'm not going to charge you anywhere near that. And we've got different sessions. The first session is all about creating that target group of your ideal prospective investors. So just like Leon Leffrey, they just texted me recently. We just raised 550,000 for our two latest flip projects, 100% OPM. Thanks a lot. All right, session number two, all about that warm up campaign. How do you reconnect with people on a personal level first and set the stage for everything that's coming down the pipeline? Here's Harry. Said starting in 2020, I had five, four units. By the end of 2020, we had 40 units. We have 10 x our portfolio thanks to other people's money, all right? So I'm gonna show you how step-by-step, -step, give you the tools you need with this program. Session number three, how to create your very own million-dollar investor presentation, what you need, what order you need to have it, how to get some practice runs under your belt, how to actually get this up and rolling, just like Matthew. can change some things. I sent it back to Gorb. We went back and forth. It's all fine-tuned and ready to go. And um, I've used the presentation twice. You know, both the people were like, wow. They're like, what a presentation. What did that? <laughs> One guy says, what did that cost? He's like, that's amazing. You know, and uh, so, no, it's it, it it definitely pumps up your feathers and makes you feel good when you show someone like that because the, the caliber of the presentation with the automation, the colors, the information, I mean, it's all there. And, we've, and then basically I said, at this point, uh, we're going to send you a letter of an intent. The one person is has got that right now, which was three days ago. The other one we did two days ago. And today they, you know, transferred almost $400,000 in RSPs to Olympia Trust. Not bad from two presentations. <laughs> All right. We'll show you how to get practice runs on your belt for doing this one-on-one -on -one in coffee meetings, one-on-one -on -one Zoom presentations. Session number four, all about the marketing, that constant, consistent, edutaining communication. You guys, this is really the fuel that gets everything going here. So have a listen to how how well this worked for William getting those investor ducks in a row. So just tell me, how's it been going since the marketing has been been happening for you? Oh, 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 it's been awesome. I'm still getting really good positive feedback from all the marketing, especially the newsletters. I People keep asking me about the newsletters and, and, and stuff like that. So, so that's been a real plus. You know, have you got any investors in the door pledging money and uh, moving forward that way? Uh, one investor that is, that invested in in my multifamily property and i've i've got a list of uh, potential investors for some future stuff in that i just gained in the last couple of weeks so he's got those investor ducks in a row you guys session number five leverage our favorite word in real estate we're going to show you how to do webinars the number one way that i've raised capital since 2013 just like we helped mark with he was going from small deals to big deals wasn't sure how to raise the capital we did a webinar for him got massive success in fact his first webinar uh, he raised enough capital to buy this first apartment building. Six months later, we rinsed and repeated the whole webinar. He raised over a million dollars from his second webinar to buy that second building. That's the one that got him out of the rat race, allowed him to quit the job, focus on real estate full time, thanks to other people's money. Wow. Um, I mean, the first time we got together was when I had this big deal that I didn't know how to raise capital for. And you helped me. You were really instrumental in, in helping me see that through. How much money did you raise from the webinar that we did? Recall? We were able to raise 440000 which is what we needed to, to close on that deal. It's mind-blowing. Mind -blowing. All right, you guys. I've been doing webinars since they used to be called teleseminars. All right, so got this dialed in. I'm going to show you how step-by-step -step 
in the whole program. So that's the first part. You got the on-demand demand digital program. You're going to get instant access to that. You're also going to get a resource bundle, the Capital Activator resource bundle with a bunch of great materials in there. But even better than that, coming up on Saturday, September the 17th, we're going to be doing our next live full day virtual workshop where you and a group of about 50 other people are going to be joining together with me on Zoom to go through this, plus the latest and greatest stuff that's working right now. And you get to bring a guest for free. This is part of the whole program. So ticket for you, ticket for a guest for this full day virtual workshop as well. So this whole program really is the roadmap to help you create a system to get your investor meetings booked, raise those six figures in a matter of weeks, and even seven figures in a matter of months. But you're probably saying, okay, sounds good to Bo, but what's the price tag? You guys, typically, this would be going for somewhere in the $1,000 to $2,000 range. I'm not going to be charging that. In fact, your price is just $197 when you go to thecapitalworkshop.com. But again, we're not even going to charge you that. Because Scott was so nice to invite me here today, we got a special offer for you. It's just $97 for you because you're part of this note boot camp. And to get that, you use the discount code Carson, because Mr. Scott Carson is the gentleman that is making this possible. So when you go to the capitalworkshop.com, make sure you use that code Carson. But all good things come to an end. So I'm going to limit this to a maximum of 19 people. So we've got a whole bunch of people live on this call right now. You get first dibs. The people who watch the replay get second dibs. If the discount code doesn't work anymore, that means the 19 spots have been taken up. All right. And you guys, when you get going right away, you get some action taker bonuses. First one is uh, my other digital program, Insider Secrets Raising Millions, another thousand dollar value there. That is a free a bonus for you. Some of the sharpest capital raisers I know sharing their best tips, tricks, strategies, ideas with you. Another one is more deals now, deal attraction marketing system. So back in the day, I did 18 deals in 18 months in a small market all using deal attraction marketing, getting motivated sellers coming to me. So that's another digital program that is free for you. And last but not least, a one-on-one coaching session to really dial this in to see how this applies for you and your particular situation. So you get the uh, on-demand program, the full-day virtual workshop with a ticket for a friend, uh, capital activator, resource bundle, more deals now, insider secrets, clarity session, total value over 5,900 bucks. Again, your investment is just $97 when you use the discount code Carson. Let me see if we've got this working here and see if this shows up there. So you guys, let me copy and paste this into the chat. Already did that for you, Dave. Oh, you're ahead of the, there you are, my friend. Look at you. It's not your first rodeo. All yeah. right. So you go there, you guys. This is what you can you see. So you can scroll down, check it all out, see all the different stuff in there. Click on the big blue button. That's going to take you to our secure encrypted online registration form. We do this through Thrivecart. So it actually tracks exactly where you came from. So make sure you put in there. So you see there where it says coupon code, put in Carson and apply. And hopefully as if by magic, poof, there it goes. The price goes down a hundred bucks, brings it down to just $97. And the system is so smart. It will count 19 of these and then it will turn off automatically. So again, if you're watching the replay after this, um, I apologize if that's not working, but even at 197 bucks, it is a bargain. All right, you guys. So that's all you have to do to get there. Go to the capitalworkshop.com, check it all out, watch the video if you want to, then click on the big blue button and then get there and make sure you use the discount code Carson to get the best deal. All right. Very good. So again, that's for 19. You can check out all the different testimonials and stuff there. Now, Scott, I'm sure we got some skeptics in the room. They're probably going, yeah, how good can this be, Debo? if you're only charging 97 bucks for it? You are, certainly aren't getting rich quick on $97 programs. So what is your sneaky ulterior motive for doing this? Well, you guys, I do love the doing the training, but I am not in the home study course business. So here's the method to my madness. I'm just going to open up the curtain for you. My main business is I have a boutique marketing agency and we work with mom and pop real estate investors just like you. And we uh, implement all of this stuff to help you raise that first six figures in a matter of weeks and even seven figures in a matter of months, just like all of those case studies and videos that you've seen throughout the presentation. Those are clients that we work with hands-on. All right. So 
What I do here is I teach you how to do everything in the home study program. And if you're a diehard do-it-yourself person, God bless you. Off you go. You got everything that you need to make that happen. On the other hand, if you'd rather work with the experts and have us set this up for you and do it right the first time and get you up and going very, very quickly, that's what we do. We have this boutique marketing agency. We provide what I would call white glove service for our clients to get this done for you. So it's like the big red easy button. It's the done for you services, if that's what you'd like. So again, a percentage of people that come on board as students become clients of ours. So that's the method to my madness. I teach you how to do everything. And then we offer you the big red easy button. And that is for us to do it for you. And for a, a percentage of people, that makes more sense than them trying to do it all on their own because they realize that we're going to send them, we're going to save them tons and tons and tons of time by doing this right the first time. Okay. Now you guys, if you're worried about your 97 bucks, don't be, this has got a full 30 day money back guarantee. So in fact, register today, get involved, get access to the online digital program. Heck, you can even attend the next workshop in September the 17th for the full day. And if after that, you're not happy for any reason, just let me know and I'll give you your 97 bucks back. No hard feelings, no questions asked. Fair enough. Okay, so there you go, you guys. You've seen example after example. John, $32 million raised. Brian Dagenet raised enough to buy a sixplex downtown Ottawa. Paul and John, these guys are doing self-storage deals in Georgia. Raised $1.5 million for their next deal. Bruno, new to the country, raised $200,000 for a multifamily property. Craig went from chasing investors to having investors chasing him. Karen Leona raised eighty grand right off the get-go. Aaron Belmore did a couple of webinars, 673000 Mark, we already talked about him. Two webinars, $1.5 million. Jamie and Leslie, they went from three units in their portfolio to 47 units in their first, you know, three units they self-financed. We started working with them and they went to 47 units their first year, 88 their second year, both quit their jobs, started traveling around. Remember I told you about the kid that was 15 that raised enough to buy a, a fiveplex? That's the kid. And no, it wasn't his mom and dad that invested with him. All right. So it works, you guys. If you're really interested in growing your portfolio, scaling things, either doing more of the kind of deals you're doing or starting to get into bigger deals, you need to start raising capital. All right. So again, the capitalworkshop.com discount code Carson. And I told you guys, I was going to give you some bonuses for being here live on the call. So let me see if I can pull that up. Here's how we do that. So again, go to the capitalworkshop.com. And then uh, you can scroll down to the very bottom. Let's get down there. And there's a star there and says download slides. Click there. That's going to take you to a Google Drive. And that's got the special report. It's got the slide deck presentation. And I actually put in another bonus here. The infographic of the, of the entire money partner formula is included there as well. Okay, there we go. That's it. Scott, I think Great we're on stuff, time. As always, and on yeah, you're doing well. Uh you should add Laura Blunk, one of our one-on-one -on -one coaching students, to that thing. She took it and raised over a half a million dollars being a student of yours and going through all that stuff. I'm sorry, who was that? Laura Blunk. There you go. Way to go, yeah. Laura. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So she bragged on it a lot. And uh, I know others have signed up for it and done a really good job. And, and here's the thing, guys. It's all about taking action. Dave holds your hand through that process. Makes you look like a million bucks, and uh, it's phenomenal. And it all starts, you guys know, you've seen what we do marketing-wise with webinars and reaching out to people, and you get people chasing you by just providing opportunities, but you're not, we're not there stranger dangering. <laughs> exactly, exactly, <laughs> Matt. And here's the thing. Here's what I realized, Scott. Um, you know, not everybody is, believe it or not, not everybody's into this marketing stuff. I know, I, right? I know you fight, you're, you're a master at it. I'm into it, but most people are not into, into real estate investing and marketing. So that's why we, we provide the done for you services actually help them get this stuff done. But again, if you're a diehard, do it yourself person, just like Laura, go for it. You're going to get massive, massive value from the training. And uh, yeah, the next workshop is coming up on Saturday, September the 17th. We keep our workshops pretty small. We limit it to a maximum of 55 attendees. Uh, so it's kind of a first come first serve type thing. Uh, so that's, that's exciting. And uh, yeah, I don't know if any questions have come up in the chat box. I just, I just know that I'm getting, I'm getting clicks on the stuff. So there's less than 10 spots available left guys, if you're serious okay. about this. So there's less than uh, nine spots now. 
There you uh, go. So I, I, that's right. I got the notification. It's going to you, Scott. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's a good thing. <laughs> but here's the thing, guys. You guys are all capable. I mean, like, like you know, Dave said, you need 200 really warm contacts you're reaching out to. We say that all the time. And you're literally just reaching out, touching base with them, you know. Um, I'll no, give we're you an not example. pushing anything. We're no, pushing. no, no. Larry Hoffman mentioned something really great last year. One of my students who's really taken it and, and, and embraced the market side. People love the warm market. They love seeing what he's doing on a regular basis and love seeing his deals and his it's pitch deck. They love it. You need somebody to help hold your hand through that to help you out with it. And you don't have to love marketing. Dave will do it for you, too, if that's something you want to do as well for you. So it's a uh, phenomenal. That's why we bring him on here, because he's an expert at what he does, and we get such rave reviews from our students who have signed up for his stuff, and I've been through his stuff. It's second to none. That's why we have him on here. We want to make it simple, stupidly inexpensive for all of you for a one day thing think about that spending through on a saturday afternoon working through that stuff and being ready and right ready to rock and roll and, and being able to take that and apply that to your business for the rest of the year for next year people are looking for deals last night during our fireside chat we talked about how there's uh 40 of americans that's not including canadians no offense them but 40 percent roughly have are worth anywhere between 100 grand and one million dollars for the United States. It's the biggest untapped market because financial advisors, all the big, they're chasing the people with millions, not a million or less. As a mm -hmm. banker, that's a huge, huge impact of, out there. How many of those folks are in your database? How many are you just a one degree of separation away from reaching out to them or just starting that conversation up again? I mean, it's not that well, hard. And, and that's that's the beautiful thing, Scott. So that's why, you know, you're like you said, let's focus on. A couple of hundred people. We're not looking for all a couple of hundred to become investors. All you need are three or four or five investors on board. And that's all the capital you need to do all the deals that you want to do at least for the next year, perhaps even further, because those investors reinvest with you. Those investors refer you to their friends and their family members. It starts the snowball effect, but you need to get it started. And ideally, Get those investor ducks in a row before you're chasing after the deals. So you don't get in that situation I was in where, you know, I found the deal and then I was scrambling desperately to get the capital for it. And I fell flat on my face. I don't want that to happen to any of your followers. Right. Well, Dave, one of the things here, we asked people to fill out a survey as they're uh, getting signed and going throughout the weekend. And it's consistent. I need help raising capital, information, and knowledge, capital fear. I need to take some action in raising capital. Uh, capital I need. Uh, I need more money for more deals, more funding for my deals. Uh, capital. I'm just going through capital, leads, funding, you know, go. more funding sources. Uh, let's see here. Just starting out, I need capital. I don't have any of my own. So, uh, Scott, a question for you here. Yeah. Because you've been, you've been in the game for a long time. What do you think personally is the big benefit of working with private investor capital? versus hard money capital and that sort of thing. What, what, what's what been the big benefit for you, my friend? So first and foremost, cheaper rates and longer terms because yeah. hard money is going to be 12, 12 points plus po uh, points for six to 12 months. They're also basing things off the ARV. Well, we're not buying the physical assets. We're buying notes. Yeah. So we're buying at a lot cheaper price and our deals aren't 90 days. They're 12, 24, 36 months, depending on the states we buy in. So that's the biggest thing. And then, then the liquidity aspect of it. When I send a deal out, we got people that want to fund, fill out some paperwork, fill out some stuff, provide to the self-directed IRA if it's with it, or they're, you know, filling out a funding agreement and wiring money into our escrow account or attorney's office to close on things. It's so much faster, but you, you, you have to, you know, because I think it was Ron Legrand that penned the term and you can smack him in the face. I would like to see this at some point. <laughs> Good deals, fine money. And I agree they do if you have a database network. And most people yeah. are so scared to communicate with people. Another question we asked on the survey, and I asked, how often do you market to your database, to your market? Mm -hmm. And 95% are never or maybe once a month. Yeah, this, I'd say I would say never is the biggest one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, 95% falls into that never. Yeah. or the, And they're either, and I'm at, once a month is not enough. I mean... Well, and it, and it really depends on how you, because here's the other challenge, Scott, most people do it the wrong way yeah. and they assume, and here's the biggest challenge, you guys, if you, whether we work with you, take the course or not, doesn't matter. I just want you to understand this really, really important. You guys, 
And Scott, I hope you and the the rest of people don't take offense to this, but we are real estate nerds. We are real estate weirdos. (laughs) Who the heck else is spending their Sunday morning (laughs) spending their Sunday morning learning about real estate stuff? So here's the big challenge. So many people assume with their marketing that the person who's receiving it is a real estate weirdo like they are, and they aren't. They are a normal human being. So here's the big thing that we do and that we teach and we work with our clients is we make that marketing edutaining, right? So Scott, you're far too young to remember this, but some people out there might remember Reader's Digest. And <laughs> you do remember, you, you sat on your grandma's knee and you're right. Re- she read that too. <laughs> had a whole shelf of Reader's Digest con- <laughs> uh, condensed novels. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. But the magazine... That was so, it actually is still out there. It's still going amazing. But it's a magazine written for grownups. However, it's written at a 13-year-old reading level. That means that any average kid can read that and understand everything in that magazine. Doesn't mean that they assume the readers are dumb. And we don't, we're not going to assume that people are dumb either. But what we need to assume is that they are not anywhere near as knowledgeable about real estate as we are. And they are not anywhere near as interested as we are either. They want to get the gist about things and they want to know that we know our stuff, right? They want to know that you're the expert, that if they invest with you, their money is in good hands. So that's why it's so important. The consistency, um, as far as frequency goes, I think what we see works best is a weekly communication. Right. And sometimes there's special occasions where you have a little bit more than that. But at least once a week, something's coming out. Drip, 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 edutaining, and then switch it up a little bit, you guys. So not always the same thing. So when we're working with clients, the first week of the month, it'll be electronic newsletter. The second week of the month, it'll be a blog post, right? Third week of the month, maybe it's a video log, then another blog post. And then so drip, 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 something different every single week. And then here's the other key. Never assume the other person's going to just miraculously know what you want them to do, right? You have to be very clear on what you want them to do. So at the bottom of your marketing, you should say, hey, if you'd like to find out more and see how this can work for you, let's have a chat. Click on the link below, pick a day and a time, let's have a conversation and see how this might work for you. Okay. Very low pressure, no pressure, not salesy. It's just, let's have a chat. Let's have a conversation because that's what you want to do. And that conversation, guess what that is, folks? That is that investor meeting. And whether you're doing that in person, you're doing that on Zoom, that's where you're going to enroll people and get them investing with you. Yeah, so true. And that's part of the reason, I mean, we we do a variety of those things with oh, the sure. email. Yeah, beautifully. Uh, Note night in America, Monday night for the last 15 years, or last 12 years, most of the night or the podcast, you know, it's just that the whole thing staying top of mind, just sharing it, entertaining and educating to do it. You know, you don't want to do the whole buy now, buy now, or find my deal. Now they'll be like, no stranger danger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's this weirdo? Who's this weirdo? I haven't heard from in forever. Try to, hit I don't want today. to talk to Chester, the note investor. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you, you and me both brother. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> don't be a Chester. All don't right. Be don't be Chester. that. You know, not everybody's a, a note nerd or real estate nerd. And that's okay. But that's that's the beauty of part of why uh we br- bring Dave on there. It's 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 good to be entertaining. It's, if you I mean, I was I always chuckle at your presentation, a few things, the images, the simple it's not hard to get people laughing about things or make oh, even make I'm, it funny yourself, you know. And 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 you don't, you know what, you don't have to be a super outgoing kind of person, like play on whatever it is. That's, that's your personality. We're not telling or suggesting that you need to become over the top or anything like that. Just be yourself because, again, that's the other beautiful thing. When we're focusing on those people that you already have a pre-existing relationship with, they already know you and they already like you the way they are. So if, if you're coming across as, as too slick or too you know, polished and that's not your normal way, then, then that's going to actually turn people off. So we just want you to be natural. We don't need another... Grant Cardone. We don't need another Gary Vaynerchuk. We need uh, Dave DeBose. We need Ravel Carters. We need the yeah, Cynthia Scott, Henrys out there. Scott Carson's out there. Yeah, exactly. You know, be yourself. You're like Scott, you're like yourself. Like the guy you see here 
is the guy he is, the guy he's on the podcast, the guy is on every Monday night. He's not put, putting on the, the super slick thing or anything like that. Very, very genuine. And that's why you resonate with people. I, I had a guy one time complain, you wear too much dry fit. <laughs> I'm like, I live in Texas. What do you think I'm going to wear? Dry, uh, dry, I don't even know what that means, man. That's like uh, like Under Armour. You wear too many Under Armour shirts. I'm like, really? <laughs> I, said, I thought I thought it was because we're so buff. That's that's why. You know, you know, there's always a gun show here in Austin, Texas, more in one way. I, I, I try to kiss that, but I can't reach. Don't, don't pull your neck muscle. Ow. <laughs> All right, let's think there's uh, there's about five of those discounts left, everybody, based on the, the the buttons or the links I'm getting in here. Before I take advantage of it, guys, you cannot go wrong. It's always good. One of the most important factors, and you heard. Derek talked about this earlier in the previous presentation. One of the most important things is having financial friends and have that money available for you to be able to, to leverage it and getting creative, whether it's notes, buying property, subject to deals, whatever. You've got to have financial friends. And how do you do that? Well, you help educate them about how they can be a financial friend. Most people are so financially uneducated. They think making four to six percent is great. And that's great for us. Uh, but if you're not reaching out to them and they find out what you're doing, they're going to be mad. Why didn't you talk to me? Why didn't you share with that that you had, I had the opportunity? Because I got some money burning a hole in my pocket. I got an old 401k or a IRA sitting out there, or I got money in a certificate of disappointment making less than 1%. Help me take that and help me turn my 401k back into a 401k and returns and stuff like that. So um, you didn't type in the code Carson Ravel. So if you didn't type in the code Carson, it would have been at 197. So yeah, I just uh, I just want to share the screen here so we can see we're not fibbing here. The no, the no, sales yeah, are yeah. definitely coming in lickety splickety here, you guys. And here's what we'll here's what I'm going to do, Ravel. Uh, honest mistake. Sometimes people don't see the coupon code. Don't worry about it. I'll know that you came from Scott, and and I will go in and and we'll refund you a hundred bucks. Now, just to caveat here, it might take a few days for that to show back up on your credit card. That has nothing to do with me going out and drinking beer with your hundred bucks. That's the credit card company. <laughs> Um, but I'll, I'll do that and I'll send you a quick little note to show you that that happened, but thank you very much. Awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. Glad to Ravel. You will, you'll get a lot of this. You'll enjoy this there for you. And, uh, Saturday, September 16th. That's a great day, man. Doing it on a Saturday and you're yeah, rock, so, right, rock, so, rock. Saturday, September the 17th. So again, you're going to, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get full access to the whole online training immediately. So you don't have to wait for that. You can get up and rolling and then. We're going to send you an invite to RSVP because we, again, we keep it pretty small uh, to about 55 people in our live virtual workshops. So you get uh, in the next few days, an invitation to RSVP for that. And then we'll be set. Awesome. Uh, if Cynthia, if you had a similar issue, then just send an email to support at davedebow.com there and your staff will get you taken care of. Like Dave said. Yeah. Now that might not be till tomorrow because the staff right. doesn't, doesn't work on Sunday. So uh, be patient yeah. if you would. Yep. No problem there for you. And uh, love it, love it, love it. Dave, thanks again for coming on Note Camp. That was such a great presentation. And and honestly, an amazing offer. You didn't have to do that, but I know my, I'm thankful. I know my students are thankful for you coming my, on there, man. My pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a lot of fun. Yes, sir. Love hanging out with you. And uh, take care and enjoy the rest of your Sunday, you guys. You're in good hands. Scott, you, this must not be your first rodeo, buddy. You, you, you it, dialed it's in. A, you know, the ninth time we've done it, you know, um, you know, and, and you look at we've had over 220 people attend at some point on Zoom throughout the weekend over uh, and we live stream it for the day, too, and then take the video down at the end of the day. So it's just not sitting out there, but 285 have watched it on YouTube as well. And I know we've got uh, over 400 people at RSVP. So we've got about half of it are ready for the replays. They just couldn't make it this weekend. So, yeah, yeah it's, awesome. it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing. So. You're watching the replay, work, my friend. Yeah, and now, do you do the class every month? Uh, uh, no, Dave, we don't. We do we do the live training about once a quarter these days. Okay, so if you're listening to this after the class on a replay, something like that, take advantage of it. www.thecapitalworkshop.com. You have to use the www part of it for the the link to work right for you. Uh, and take advantage of, like you said, get signed up for it. Dave will take, take David's team will work with you on that and get you rock and roll to the next one. If this is if you're too busy for the 17th or after you sign up after the 17th. Awesome, uh, Patricia, Patricia asks, is oh. the live session recorded so that people can go back? No, you don't need it to be recorded because that's you know that's the training that you're getting in the actual home study program. 
the thing is the the live session we're going to have some new and updated stuff in there uh that that we we don't record it we do it live just because it works better perfect i love it Excellent. thanks dave enjoy thanks your a lot, buddy. we'll talk to you later take care bye-bye